Had the first we lived on the road for 12 years and then we'd come back to Oklahoma and would clean up the house and rent it out to somebody else and then after that four or five times like that the house got so messed up one time that we said this is a disaster and who wants this house to go down they owe us a thousand dollars they didn't pay us any rent and um, so we turned the place into a bar we, we, we had a couple of parties people came we played and we thought okay we'll open up well, I was afraid to do that because he had stopped drinking and, I, and he needed to stop drinking. So that was pretty scary, but he convinced me that it was going to be okay. And um, so we opened the bar in 88, and then the festival grew out of that. In 91, we had our first festival. And um, then the festival, and we got on the Arts Council around that time too. So we were getting a lot of respect in this area, in this state. And so we'd still go back to California and stay six or eight weeks or three months and then come back. And we'd go at least every year, two years, maybe every year. So we were, doing a, we were getting out of here a lot, you know, but we're coming back. And so um, we'd go in the winter when the bar was closed. And um, then we started working in the schools, and we got a big award for that. Um, 1999, we got the first round of awards, and that was... Um, the International Keeping the Blues Alive Award from the Blues Foundation in Memphis for our work with kids. And then I got that one too. That's got my name on it too. And then we also, um, he got inducted into the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, which is in Tulsa. And they had the sit-down dinner, you know, $80 a plate, and it was a beautiful night. And they put us in the, we had the use of a motel room in one of the classiest places. They did it right. It was very nice. And what happened was on the way back from that, he was driving home, and he said, you know, he said, I feel like a weight has been lifted from my shoulder that I never knew was there. He said, I just don't know what it is, but it's a very strong feeling. And I said, okay. Well, a couple of days later, he figured it out, and he said, you know, my mother raised me in a, grandmother raised me in a corn whiskey house, and she took a lot of flack about that. They always said I'd end up in jail by the time I was 21 years old, and that all her three daughters would have tons of babies. Well, I was the only baby, and I didn't end up in jail. He said, but I always felt like I had to um, validate and get respect for my family um, coming through raising me in a corn whiskey house and needing to do that and the criticism from the you know, community and religious community and all that. And he said, and I think that I have done it. I have uh, proven that they were right. And that was a powerful thing because you don't play blues to make money. 
you play blues for other reasons, but not to make money. So how do you get your kudos, you know, when you've been doing it nonstop, day in and day out? You know, we played four or five nights a week every single week for 30 years. We missed one gig. From him being sick, he missed one gig, but I did the gig. I, I missed one, and he did the gig without me, got somebody else. And then we missed one due to mechanical failure. I mean, and we were traveling across the country in old vehicles. So we were, you know, he worked sick. Every time he got pancreatitis, it didn't matter. He went to work. And um, so when you work that hard at something, you really need to, um, and you end up and you know you're not going to have any money, you know, and your friends are retiring with retirements and stuff. You need something to um, validate that commitment. And he got into that Hall of Fame, and then um, we got into the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame here in Muskogee, which was another wonderful night. You know, we were on stage. Four standing ovations from 4,000 people in 20 minutes. It was just an amazing night, and it meant so much to us that we said, well, now, the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame, they put two blues people in this year because it's the year of the blues, but most years they ignore blues. They don't know enough about it, and they have too many other people. The Jazz Hall of Fame is doing the jazz thing very, very well, but they're not putting in very many blues people. We know everyone in the entire blues community. We have you know, the respect of the press from the festival and, and all the work that we've done, the Arts Council, and we have a place. So we better do this because it meant so much to D.C. We realized that um, we, could, we could keep, we could, I don't know how to say it, but you know what I'm saying. We could do that for other people. And so um, we got the trophy together and I've been to the, sculpture class at Bacon and just made a music note about this high. Just, I was using it as a doorstop. You know, I said, that's the trophy. <laughs> you know? And he went to work every year and he'd do all the photographs and write Hall of Fame inductee and all that on there and we put them on the wall in his crowd. And then it got to the point where we knew we needed to make a separate event out of it because it was just too much. To, it was getting lost in the shuffle of the festival. So uh, this was... this. We do it on Memorial Day weekend, and this was the second one that we've done as a separate event, and it's a very magical night. It really is nice. We give them a trophy and a certificate, and this year I didn't get the press releases out because it happened, the inductions were a week after the funeral. So, But usually I do a whole thing with the press, and we get everything on the um, website and all of that. And it means a lot to people, and it's, it's a really nice thing to be.
me They had discovered the atom bomb and he said I wrote a song about it.
what I mean. That's why I'm so afraid.
So watch the website.
And the rain come tumbling down Um, 